Hi, my name is João Reneri for Drones Bonero, and today we're talking brushes. Um, I'm not gonna give you like one by one what it is that I sort of do. Today I wanna focus on the sort of the steps I took to get into the sound that I like about brushes. And let's start with how the setup of this snare is. There are a couple drummers that I look up to as far as a brush player and the sound that they get out of the drums while playing brushes. One is Mel Lewis and the other one is Elvin Jones. I don't think that people talk too much about Elvin Jones and his brush playing, but I find it amazing. And both of them play with very loose heads, sort of like low pitched heads. This is at least the impression that I get from hearing those recordings. I myself like that sound, however, when I'm playing like normal snare, I really like things should, should be tuned up really high. So I ended up like sort of modeling my brush playing to a very high tune snare sound where the head is, is pretty tight. So that allows me to do a couple of stuff that I can't really do or try to manage you to do while playing on a, on a sort of more giving uh, drum head when it's tuned very low. And for the brushes that are thousand from um, models out there, I kind of like like the medium course um, of like the tension of the rods or the tension of the, the metal. But in some occasions, if I'm playing big band, if I'm playing in a room that is very dry, then I will go the hardest that I have. And today I bought, I brought two pairs. One is like the Vader pair that I sort of got a year ago. And this one that is turned out to be my favorite pair. I, like I had a phase where I bought all the brushes that are in the market just to see what it is that I really liked. And this is a Rego tip. I, unfortunately, I don't, I don't think they can get it in, in, in Europe anymore. I tried. And I think this is just like the traditional version. Like I said, the wires are not that um, hard, but also not super soft. There's a little bit of give but not too much. Um, and now let's talk about like the stepping stones of at least the way I see brushes. I tried in the beginning everything and I even started with the circular motion, which is what pretty much everybody talks about. That kind of stuff. This is how I started, like the uh, Philly Joe way of playing and some of the videos that I was watching from um, uh, Jeff Hamilton, like very big sound, big motion. And then as I got more and more into and try and started to figure out the sounds that I liked, I came across a drummer, a German drummer called uh, Jochen Rückert. And he has a very distinct way of playing drums. And it serves as a parallel motion, not much of a like round motion, very much parallel. So um, it, it would go like this. And to going around the drum head would be just to add texture, maybe to accent passages, maybe off beats, some down beats, but the actual like, filling up the space with the brushes would be done with a parallel motion. And I, st I started like doing the one on the right side and then two on the left, three on the right, and then four on the left. And then sometimes I would switch and see what I liked the most. And I realized that I really like going outwards. Like I can get a more, I don't know, more control going outwards. So what I would do is play the two and four outwards. That means that I have to play the one on the left and then two, one and three on the left and then two and four um, on, on the right. So I'd go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And I really wanted to get a strong quarter note only with my left hand. For some reason at that time, I thought if I can get a really good sound of quarter note on my left hand, there's less burden on the right hand. So I can comp more if the um, quarter note is already established through the left hand. So what I then started to do is sort of stomp, but still try to get a very legato sound across the measure. So I would go,
that kind of stuff. And you'll notice that as it gets to the middle, then the, the sound will become greater. And so to circumvent that, what I started to do is have a little less space to work with, such that the sound uh, adds more consistency. One, two, three, go. And then you also think about the tension, how much tension and force you're giving into the head. Jeff Hamilton says the tougher the wire of the drums is, less tension you have to have because you can really hear if you don't apply consistent force over the drums. And this is something that I really took, took to heart. So I started experimenting with that. So almost only a sort of wall of sound with the left end and then try to play everything legato but giving a nudge into the quarter note. And then the other one is really stomping the quarter note such as the way I just played. So let's play the wall of sound. Let's go uh, with the left hand. Three, four. There's less force going in, so the wire is not touching every time, and thus, if there's inconsistency with their if, with your left hand, they're not hearable because everything is still pretty soft, and you really want to create that wall of sound. I would add though that if you're looking for that wall of sound, then perhaps a circular motion would serve you better, just because you then have more area to work with. If you're going sideways, this is more like very staccato-y way of playing drums that you're trying to play legato, if that makes any sense, but it does for me. So um, now adding the left, the right hand, you can then control how much quarter note you want to hear with the left hand and then sort of adjust. If here you want more of the quarter note but then you mix, mix a little bit of right hand in so both carries the same burden for the groove. Three, four. So here I'm not stomping too much the left hand. One of the things that I like about this playing is that I can keep my right hand consistently in the same place, meaning that I can pretty much get the same sound. Whereas if I'm switching around because I'm doing the round motion, then I will eventually have to cross just to be able to not come in the way with the left hand. And so at that time, I would divide my snare sort of like, like this, not true straight but like this and then this would be the area in which or this right here is the area in which the left hand plays and over here on the top is where the right hand plays and that gave me like a world of consistency where my quarter note is so I would go and now let's play with a little bit of force less force. That kind of stuff. Now, we then come into the right hand and how the stroke is, because now we're talking brushes, we have the availability of playing up and down, sort of very staccato and trying to get all the wires to touch the head, or you can go sideways, sort of how uh, Jeff Hamilton tell us to play, or at the very least how he himself plays. And that creates many possibilities, because then you can sort of stretch the quarter note, have them a bit more like softer touch, or very staccato. Uh, in mind comes um, a couple of songs from Benny Golson where that staccato sound, almost like marching band type of playing with the brushes, is better served. And perhaps if you're playing like a Jerome Karen standard, you want that like freshness, softness that comes from blush playing sideways. So I'm gonna give a couple examples. Three, four. And now sideways, three, four. All 
All right, so then you have the sort of butt end of the wires, the very middle of the brushes, and that comes into play uh, in other styles of music more, but I do remember a couple of players in my local scene like doing wonders with accented notes without the butt end, and then mixing in the butt end, and that creates like a wonderful sound, especially if you wanna like really make sure the hits are together, or sometimes, you know, if you if you notice that the quarter note is slipping away with the band, and then you can get them back into direction. So one, two, three, go. and you, you get that snappiness. Now, one thing to clarify before we move on to perhaps other topics within the brush world is, for me, it is very important to keep the quarter note motion on the left hand, even though you might be playing off beats on the right hand. So that is a bit of a coordination because you are going sideways with one hand, and at the same time, you really wanna stomp either the quarter note with the right hand or the offbeat. And so that thing has to come um, very precisely, very clear, so it doesn't get muddy, because already brushes can get muddied very easily. So an example, I'll play like a couple bars of downbeat and then a couple bars of, down, of offbeat while the left hand plays the quarter note. Three, four, And I'll try to not have the left hand play so much of a quarter note, but still the motion. Three, four. And try to play legato, which is very difficult, and I can't do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk just quickly about um, ballads on brushes. And for me, I use the Alan Dawson way to play ballads. It's beautiful. And I never really thought about like playing ballads any other way. Perhaps I never really gave that much thought because I already had something that worked. And that is to do this motion. So very big quarter notes doing this motion. So let's go one two, three, uh, uh. And then this is like walking ballad kind of tempo. And then the quarter, the skip note comes from the, uh, from the left hand as well, or the right hand, three, four, If you want a more staccato sound, then the right hand comes in as well with the skip note. And it is obvious now, but I'm gonna say it anyways, I pull it outwards. Some players pull in inwards, but I figure for me it's a little bit easier and more comfortable to go outwards. Um, for very slow ballads, ones that you imagine playing like uh, eighth note, straight eighth notes, then there are a couple of things that I like to do. So two, two three, and four, and. Sort of mixing which hand is playing the downbeat and which hand is playing the offbeat. Sometimes the left hand, sometimes the right hand. Now let's talk about up tempo. Um, there are uh, like wonderful people that can really pull off the uh, um, three skip notes or the three notes uh, on the right hand while playing brushes. There was a time I could do this. Nowadays, not so much. <laughs> So I either go the Ed Soth way, which Eric, um, Eric Honig plays sometimes, which is to play two and four with the left hand, which is very interesting way. So the way he does, he really snaps the left hand and then the skip notes come from the right hand. So T, D, 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 it's 
kind of crazy. And then if we go faster, and then you try to keep the brush on the head so it gives a more legato filling up kind of sound. I haven't really figured out how to like comp too much because then I have to get back into true and form with the left hand, but it's still a work in progress. And what I use the most if I have to play those kind of tempos is to keep on playing the quarter note here and then only the skip note with the left hand while I'm trying to keep the left hand on the, uh, on the head. So here's the quarter note. And then if I don't play very staccato and keep everything on the head, that really does sound like I'm playing everything with the right hand. And one of the advantages of this is you can go as fast as, as you can play single strokes. So sometimes you can get really those Brad Meldau, Oscar Peterson tempos, just because you're playing everything like the quarter note with the right hand. And it's pretty much effortless. All right, let's move on to the last topic I wanna to talk about right now. Uh, is samba and a very simple way to play samba with brushes. Um, I'm from Brazil and there is a wealth of drummers who have researched the ways and the beauty and the magic of playing that music with brushes. One of them is Edu Ribeiro, perhaps the most influential drummer at this very moment and he's he has a wealth of knowledge as far as brush playing on YouTube and contacting him himself. Um, and I got a couple of stuff from him, but there's also an old school or a bit more old school guy. His name is Kiko Freitas. And what I'm showing you is one thing that I got from him, not personally, just watching him throughout the years. And it's just to play single strokes, but then accenting a couple of patterns out of the samba tradition with uh, the hands. And you're splitting the hands, so you really keep the single stroke 16th note thing going. So one, two, uh, 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 uh. And you do notice in here that there is sort of that samba swing, the second 16th note. There is, this is a bigger topic that I wanna get into right now, but perhaps go with your ears and try to emulate or just you start with the very straight 16th note and work your way into that kind of sound. But it's actually easier if you listen to the music, better than only practicing drums anyways. Um, let's just start with the tak chika ka chika ka chika ka chika ka and you're exiting the first 16th note and the very last 16th notes, like so. And then you bring in the butt end of the uh, wires and try to keep the uh, wires on the head. And that gives more of a softer, nicer, shaker sound. And then you bring a couple of patterns in which, so let's go the uh, pandero patterns. Everything, single strokes, there's no like uh, too many right hands here or left hand there and that kind of stuff. This is a lot <laughs> to talk about brushes. I hope you can get a couple of stuff there and mix and match, practice, w go watch people play, go and search online. There's uh, pretty much everything that I talk here I got from YouTube or watching people play, taking lessons with a couple of my heroes and trying to figure out myself my way and it should not be any different to you. Happy practice.